Hello, hope you're doing well, and today we're playing, or we have a very special video planned, because we're playing Kali. Now, uh, obviously a lot of you know this if you watch the stream or you just watch the YouTube, I haven't played Kali in a long time. Uh, to be honest, I kind of forgot that this character existed. Um, not because I think she's bad or anything, it's just, I don't know, I just kind of haven't played her in a long time. Uh, especially considering how often I used to play her in the past, so we're playing some Kali. Uh, now, as always, through my videos, we're going to go over the abilities for those of you who don't know what she does or just don't play assassins uh, much. Uh, we're going to go into the build, some tips and tricks on playing jungle, and tips and tricks on playing the character specifically. Uh, so with that out of the way, let's go ahead and get started. Also, do remember, my Twitch and Discord are down in the description. Go ahead and follow my Twitch if you want to watch me live, uh, and my Discord if you need people to play with or you just want to play with me or chat. Uh, go ahead and join for that. We should be able to kill him here, uh, specifically if the Yu Huang hits that stun. Uh, very nicely done. Uh, and even then, this guy used his dash, but I don't think he'll come out of tower. Uh, so like I mentioned, we're playing Kali. Uh, now Kali's very, very cool because of her passive. Uh, her passive starting off, uh, what it does is whenever you kill your target, you gain to get... Actually, we're going to be able to kill this guy here again. Uh, he's pretty out of position here, and I think he used his hammer to clear the wave. So, if the Yu Huang hits anything, he should die here. I should be able to get the auto attacks, subsequent auto attacks to finish off the kill. Very nicely done on my Yu Huang, really paying attention to what's happening here in this mid lane, allowing us to get the kill. Uh, so, I want to go ahead and talk about the passive here, so I can explain how important it is what we just did. This character is usually considered to be a late game character and very hard to you know kind of do things early game she doesn't have that great of damage and she can't really keep up and hit too many auto attacks uh, in the early game uh, so having those two kills really helps us get around uh, that kind of early game weakness that kali does offer we're able to get the beads on the mid laner as well uh, which is why you kind of see me lurking here i have a feeling i can get a kill again on this guy uh, and there are a couple of reasons why uh, a, he has no bead, so he can't stop me from stun stunning him. B, he has no escape. He has his backfire, but I can wait for the backfire here, as you see me doing here. Uh, but it doesn't look like he's going to use it, and Yu Huang should be able uh, to pick up that kill. Also, thank you for the follow. Um, anyways, as I was saying, Kali, passive. Uh, so, at the start of every match, you can pick one enemy player to be your target. Uh, if you were to die, you can again pick another target every time you die and respawn. And if you kill your target, then the next closest enemy, you know, god will be your next target. Uh, so that's how the targeting system works. Uh, and you hear me talk about the target and picking your target and how the target is chosen by the game. Uh, so in that regard, you might be wondering, well, what does this passive actually do, Dax? And you've been talking about it for like four hours and you haven't told us what it means. Okay, well, I'm going to tell you now, okay? Um, physical penetration against this target. Uh, I don't like to go over specific numbers in these videos. Uh, the prime reason being is that numbers change. Characters get nerfed, characters get buffed, characters get tweaked. I don't want to give you guys false information when next patch they might change this character or the patch after that. Or if you're watching this a month or two after the release date, I don't want to give you guys false information. Characters get changed all the time. In fact, recently we've seen patches where like 70 characters get changed uh, altogether and actually Kali was one of them. Uh, so like I'm mentioning, I don't want to kind of give you guys numbers, but it is percent pen against that specific target. Uh, but most importantly, you gain a heal and a pretty large heal at that uh, whenever you kill your designated target. Uh, even if you don't get the kill, even if you get an assist, you get a small amount of healing. But if you manage to get the last hit, this is a lot of healing that you're getting. Uh, and then, then another very important part that pertains to the early game specifically, as you saw it here, is you gain 30% uh, increased gold for an assist or kill. Uh, this means that when I got two kills on the target and one assist, we got an immense amount of gold just because we killed our target so often. Uh, so that's something that I want you to kind of pay attention when you're playing Kali. Always go for your target. Always maximize your passive. Try to go for that heal. Try to go for that extra gold. And they're again going to be a bit easier to kill with that penetration as compared to other characters. Now very nice done. I don't think I'll be able to kill him, but I definitely get away. No issues. Uh, but yeah, that's my number one tip when it comes to this passive is always prioritize the target, uh, right? 
And you might be wondering, well, how do I choose my target early? You mentioned I can choose my target. Who should I choose? Uh, well, there are two train of thoughts that I like to go for when choosing a target. It's either A, the easiest character to kill, whether that be a squishy character with no escape, um, or someone that you have an answer to their escape. Um, and then the second train of thought is, what's your plan early game? Did you go in planning to gank duo early? Then pick the, uh, you know, the carry duo laner. Uh, did you go in with the plan to gank the mid laner early like I did this match, then pick the mid laner as your target? Uh, play it smartly. If you want to kill a specific person early, then pick that person to be your target. That way you can heal after you kill them and then also uh, specifically gain that extra gold, uh, most importantly in the early game. Uh, and if you don't have a plan, also thank you so much for the subscription on Twitch. And like I mentioned, go follow my Twitch. We always have a lot of fun. All of these videos are taken from Twitch, but I do voice over them uh, so I can teach you guys a bit about something. Because in Twitch, you know, I'm responding to your guys' comments. I'm answering questions. I'm, you know, fucking around with you guys and, and bullshitting and having some fun. So obviously I don't have as much time to kind of talk about the actual game. Uh, so I like to voice over these so you guys can get all of this information. Uh, so like I mentioned, if you don't have like a specific goal in mind and you kind of just like to play it uh, by how the game goes and depending on how the start is, uh, then just simply pick the person that's easiest to kill uh, and then go from there. Uh, another small tip, uh, and this is just for assassins in general, always focus the person that's easiest to kill to help you deal with some of the characters that are harder to kill, but never kill, never like re-keep killing the same person like three times or four times. That's no longer worth it for you at that point. Use, if you kill them once or twice, awesome. Use the gold and level lead that you gained from killing those two people to kill the next person that's easiest to kill. And then kill them once or twice, move on to the next. Eventually, everyone on their team is going to be easy to kill, and you would have killed everybody on their team at least twice. Uh, and this does a couple of things. It makes you stronger because you're not killing the same person and getting less gold. You're killing everybody equally um, and getting you know gold for all of them. Uh, increase gold and you're also helping out your team proportionally across the map you don't just want to help one person if you keep ganking the solo laner over and over more subscriptions thank you guys um so so sweet um you guys are great uh thank you for all of the support that i've seen on the twitch on the youtube you guys are great and in that regard to the twitch I'm, i keep interrupting myself i'm sorry there's so much to talk about i have a new schedule it's going to be on um youtube it's going to be on uh, Discord. It's going to be on Twitch. New schedule is I will be streaming for eight hours every Thursday, Friday, and Saturday. Um, or it might be Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday. It depends on what I decide from when this video releases. But you guys will have that information by the time this video releases. Anyways, uh, yeah, very, very important uh, to kind of kill everybody and not just one person. I spent a lot of time on the passive, I know, but it's a very, very intricate passive, very important to know how to use it, and I'm not just trying to teach you what the abilities do, I'm trying to teach you how to use them. Uh, so let's move on to her first ability, Nimble Strike. Now this jump, uh, this is a jump, this is your leap, this is your form of escape, it's also your form of initiate, but if you buy blink, which I would really highly recommend, I do recommend that you use the blink as an initiate if you can, and really just save the one for an escape. Uh, but this does a uh, very few things. It does damage and it heals you on the t uh, according to the target hit, depending on how much um, health they have. I should die here. Do I manage to get away? I get pulled back. No, I die. All right. So as I was saying, the damage on this ability isn't too insane. Uh, the heal is kind of good, but if you're jumping on someone because you desperately need the heal, then wouldn't it just be better to jump away? There are some situations in where you want to jump in uh, because it heals you based on their health. So if they're very low and you can manage to get the kill with the jump, uh, then you're going to heal quite a big uh, amount. But really, truly, your escape and your initiate in some situations. I'm moving on to her second ability. This is going to be your main source of clear, your main source of damage, uh, and this is kind of sorry kind of going to be the bread and butter of your kit uh now what does the dax and uh, well i'm glad you asked three projectiles get thrown out um and with these three projectiles uh you're able to kind of choose where they intersect it's a bit of a interesting targeter uh, if you will you can choose where they intersect can i kill this valor i can and this guy should probably die as well if not to me then hopefully to this aphrodite or the ui very nice uh, like I mentioned, you kind of get to choose where the three projectiles intersect. 
uh, and you're going to want to hit all three of these. If you can hit all three of these, it's quite an absurd amount of damage. Unfortunately, I don't think I do enough damage to for the tick to kill. It's going to be quite a lot of damage if you manage to hit all three of these projectiles. Uh, now again, it's a bit harder to do, but that's where we get into the third ability here just in a second. That's going to make it a bit easier to, to hit this ability consistently. Uh, now Lash, her second ability, the three projectiles, do burst damage on impact, and then also they do bleed damage right there for after. Um, so you might be able to you know, catch a kill and overall put together with the burst damage and bleed damage uh, after the subsequent damage after. Uh, it's quite a very threatening amount of damage, even early game, it's quite a lot of damage. Uh, and this does also some other things. Uh, specifically, it gives you lifesteal. Uh, so you kind of notice this character is kind of focused around healing. Her 1 has a way of sustain, her 2 has a way of sustain, uh, and obviously her passive gives her like her full health bar, uh, health bar, health bar, sorry I can't talk today, back uh, if she manages to get the kill. Uh, so it's a lot about sustaining, uh, but how will you actually hit these three projectiles? I mean, you could skill shot it, it's not the easiest thing to do, but it's by no means the hardest. Uh, but you have your third ability, Incense. This is going to be your CC. This is going to be how you keep up with people, how you catch up to people that are just barely out of your auto attack range. This is going to be your escape if you need to just stun everyone around you and get away. Uh, so specifically, it's a stun. It's a stun in a circle around you. It's a decent radius. Uh, it stuns for about one second. And then also, the cool thing about this ability is it gives you a buff. It gives you extra physical power uh, while you, when you use this ability. Uh, which is pretty pretty cool especially considering with the combo you usually hit the stun and then you hit the two you're going to have that increased power for the second ability and this ability again like i mentioned already does quite a big amount of damage so now having this on top of that is pretty strong um moving on to the ultimate destruction i'm pretty sure it's been uh, you know a big part of your guys' frustration with this character if you if you played against her uh, very often uh, Kali becomes unstoppable force of destruction. What does that mean? It means you can't kill her. She cannot die while this is active. Uh, now, the duration of this ability goes up depending on how many levels you have. Um, she kind of goes into the state of, again, being unable to be killed. She can drop all the way to one health, but nothing under that uh, for the duration. She's also immune to some sorts of CCs. Uh, as we go ahead and gank this Ishtar. I do have my alt ready to go if I ever need it. Uh, unfortunately, I should have used it a bit sooner, but we should be able to clear with the jump into the auto attack here. Uh, but like I mentioned, the ultimate. Uh, she's immune to some sorts of CCs, starting off knock-up slows and protected from roots as well. Um, the only real thing that you should worry about when you're under this um, ultimate is stuns. That's the only real thing that's going to stop you. Uh, if Kali is under 15% of her total health at the end of the duration, she will heal to 15% health. So if you're at one health, you will gain some health after, so you're not just gonna like insta-die to a minion the minute this ult is over. Uh, now this does do damage. In the area around you, uh, there are some blades, uh, you know, projectiles floating around you and a radius around you. Uh, and they do damage. It's a very small amount of damage, but it's definitely enough to catch a kill if you can't really catch the distance to catch up to this person. Uh, but this is her kit. Um, you can see she has a very kind of all-in kit. You're kind of trying to all-in, uh, you know, stun and try to one-shot a target and kind of move on to the other target. Uh, get, keep getting those heals, keep getting that extra gold. Uh, and it doesn't really, this character doesn't really have the playstyle where you're trying to retreat after one kill. It doesn't mean you can't. If you blink and get a kill, you can always jump out. Uh, but this character is kind of a high risk, high reward character where you're trying to kill that first person and then move on to the next and then move on to the next and not really retreat as much as maybe other assassins might want to do. Uh, this is very much an assassin that's kind of like, I'm going to try to kill two people. Excuse me. <coughs> Had to cough. Need some water. Uh, this is the kind of character we're going to kind of want to kill one or two people before you die. Maybe even three. It's kind of that, you know character where you kind of want to just trade out for for more than what you're giving up with your life uh, but again that's by no means the way you have to play her uh, that's just kind of what the kit is built around and i don't even recommend that you play her this way uh, that's just kind of what the the kit is designed about uh and you have a couple of tools to allow you to do this first off you have forms of sustain to allow you to keep fighting and keep moving on to the next target uh, you have a form of cc to kind of say i can probably kill someone uh, in the duration that they're stunned 
And then you obviously have your ult making you immune, saying, I am going to pop this ultimate so that I can kill my target without being CC'd and without being killed. Um, and that way, I'm able to heal back to full and move on to the next one. All of these things make Kali very hard uh, to kind of deal with, especially in the lower ranks. One thing specifically is when you think of an assassin going into the enemy backline, the only issue that that assassin would have in killing like a mage or a carry is someone peeling, peeling them off, stunning, you know, rooting, knocking up, slowing them. Uh, and it makes it very hard for an assassin to do their job. Kali is one of the characters that does not have to deal with that issue. If you pop your ult, they cannot knock you up. They cannot slow you. They cannot root you. They can stun you. Uh, but even then, we see a lot of Kali's going Magi's Cloak, which makes it so that it, they can't stun you either, which again is very, very powerful. If late game, if you as Kali say, I am going to kill that mid laner, you're going to be able to kill that mid laner straight up. Uh, so we kind of took a lot of time into her kit because unlike the other videos that I make where I go over the abilities and then go over the tips and tricks, I like to go over the tips and tricks as we're going over the specific ability. I think that's a more fluid way of doing it, but let me know down in the comments if, there, if you like the older way better. Uh, so now let's start going over the build. Now, the builds in terms of Kali are very uh, versatile. You can go anywhere from penetration and attack speed. You can go into critical strike chance. I've even seen some Kali's go into the power build. I don't know if I would recommend it personally, but I've seen it done for the record. Um, so this one specifically, uh, we're going kind of tank shredder uh, build. Uh, but by, you know, by no means do you have to be stuck uh, going one specific build. It truly is up to you. Uh, not only what you're comfortable, but specifically... Uh, what's better for your situation do they have three tanks you know do they have a solo laner do they have a you know solo laner um warrior sorry a support guardian and then do they have like a zonkwe mid or a hades mid some of these like tankier characters then you might want to go tank shredder as opposed to going into the crit build right uh also think about uh factors such as this do they have an enemy geb or an enemy ho yi these characters inherently counter uh crit critical strike chance with their passives or you have to keep in mind if you build crit and you're not going to be able to deal with the tanks as much because you're doing less damage because you don't have as much penetration and power uh, but specifically they can build spectral armor and significantly reduce the damage of your crit chance so these are the kinds of things that you want to take into consideration when you're looking into what kind of build you're going as Kali now do they have like a mage in the solo lane right a mage in the mid lane and a, just a, a one singular support or maybe even a healer as their support uh, with how much aphrodite and health support we've been seeing then you might be wanting to go into crit and less percent penetration and maybe some more flat penetration uh, since there's not no tanks that you have to worry about you don't really have to worry about buying that like tank shredder type of build that i'm going in this specific video uh because again you can kind of just crit people since they're all squishy and you can kind of just be this one-shotting menace uh but these are the things that you consider uh don't ever feel like you have to go the same build every game examine what characters they have examine who you're having trouble with if halfway in the, if you decide to go crit and then halfway in the game you're like their tank is you know six and oh we can't kill him he's causing too much issues there's nothing wrong with saying i was going to go crit but now that we're having an issue with their solo laner i'm going to go executioner I'm going to go uh, kin size. I'm going to go something like a dominance. You know, do build what is makes more sense for your certain situation, not what build you read online, right? Because build, at the end of the day, the thing that separates a good character from a great, or sorry, a decent player from a great player, is if you can learn how to counter build. All right, with that out of the way, let's actually go into this specific build. Uh, starting off, I don't think there's any other option other than, um, you know, Protector of the Jungle or Eye of the Jungle uh, early game. Uh, this kind of gives you, uh, you know, some attack speed, which is what you want as a Kali, but specifically Protector of the Jungle, the upgrade is just straight up overpowered <laughs> on most characters. Uh, so that's why we went for that. Moving on, we go into Golden Blade. Now, Golden Blade is specifically important for one reason and one reason only, is it allows you to clear the jungle insanely fast. That way you can start rotating around the map faster, getting camps faster, which overall, uh, you know, gives you pressure. It gives you the ability to gank more often if you can clear camps faster. And specifically, if you clear camps faster, 
uh, as Kali, then the camps are going to be up, you know, sooner, which means you're going to, throughout the game, inevitably clear the more camps than the enemy, if you can clear the camps faster than they are. If you're clearing them right when they spawn, and as fast as possible, inevitably, you know, it's not going to be a drastic difference, but it all kind of comes together to give you a bit of a lead in that regard. Uh, but most specifically, if you clear them faster, you can rotate across the map faster. Simple as that. If you can out-rotate your jungle, you're doing a good job. It's very, very good on Kali, because she relies so heavily on her attack speed. Alright, so what's next? We went into Bloodforge. Bloodforge is just straight up very powerful <laughs> these days. Uh, we get the attack speed from Bloodforge now, and the passive works very beautifully with Kali. Uh, again, we went pretty in-depth into Kali's kind of playstyle. And Kali's playstyle is to kill one person and move on to the next, and kill one person and move on to the next, get the healing from her passive, get that increased penetration to help out in that regard, uh, and get that extra gold. Well, Bloodforge has a very similar purpose, is every time you kill someone, you gain a shield, and you gain, uh, you know, movement speed, and, and these types of uh, augments. Uh, so it makes you even harder to kill than the healing alone. Whereas even if they counter the healing, they still have to deal with the blood forge shield and the fact that you're now faster, right? And now that it gives you attack speed, because it's very important as Kali to have attack speed, uh, I think I forgot to mention that uh, attack speed is probably Kali's best stat, regardless of whether you're going against anti-tank or anti, you know, into something like a crit chance build. Regardless of what you're going for, you're going to want to max out that attack speed. That is your best stat. Uh, so like I was mentioning, I like how I just <laughs> went into drop two bombs to get rid of the tower. Uh, but yeah, like I mentioned, you're going to be getting that attack speed. Um, Bloodforge now gives you attack speed. You want that stat. Very, very cool that it works so well on Kali. And you rush. I like to rush a second item because it does give me a decent amount of power and some life steal as well. Uh, moving on, I like to go into Hazen Katana. Uh, now, Hazen Katana does one thing and one thing only for me, and it allows me to just say, I am going to pick one target to kill, for example, I'm going to kill this mid laner, and nothing you do can stop me from catching up to you. I am just going to keep holding down W and mouse 1, and, and I'm just going to keep auto attacking you at the speed of light. Uh, and that's really truly what this item is for, you're not getting any insane stats, you're not getting any insane passive other than that, you know, passive. Uh, you're not getting any secondary effects. It's straight up so you can just keep up with people and make sure that you get that kill, so you can reset your passive, you can get your target, get the healing, get the extra gold. Everything really does come down to killing your target, and I know I mentioned it before, but I will mention it again, it is of the utmost important kill 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 your target all the time focus 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 your target all of the time right uh so you can see here in this specific fight i'm kind of looking to see if i can flank anyone uh i'm not playing a warrior i can't play this style of play where i'm just going to be you know in front of my team trying to be threatening no you're playing an assassin as kali you're looking to look in the in the sidelines seeing if you can catch someone off guard and that's going to kind of be your play style uh, now that that uh, fight has kind of disapparated, I'm going to go over... Oh, we should be able to kill him, maybe? Nice job. And then I'll go ahead and dive the this guy again with the healing from my passive. I can kind of try to catch up to this guy, but I think he's going to get under Phoenix in time. Or Fountain, sorry. Moving on to the next item, Kinsize. Now, Kinsize, uh, even if you're not going Tank Shredder, I would still recommend you go Kinsize on this character. And for one specific reason... Um, Again, like I mentioned earlier, you want attack speed on Kali, but not only do you want attack speed, and attack speed is your most important stat, you want to max out your attack speed, right? Uh, the way Aussie works is with every attack, you deal, you know, bonus damage based on how much health the enemy team has. Uh, the cool and interesting thing is you're maxing out your attack speed on this character, meaning that you're attacking super fast and constantly applying this bonus damage, constantly you're applying it 2.5 times a second, right? Uh, eventually, if you hit a couple of auto attacks, if you're just attacking them for like two seconds, you've applied so much extra damage from this item, it makes it super worth it to go, even if you're not specifically having the goal in mind of killing some of the tankier characters. Uh, so I hope that makes sense. And then it also has the added benefit that it's really good against the tankier characters, right? Um, then after that, I like to go into Dominance. Maybe in the past I would have gone Executioner, but I mean Dominance having attack speed, uh, having that percent penetration, it's pretty good and it gives you a decent amount of power as well. Uh, if you want to go for the dominant or sorry executioner, there's nothing wrong with that. And there are even situations in which I have gone both. I've sold in Golden Blade Lightning because I no longer need it for clear. 
uh, and I just kind of go into Executioner as well if I'm really having issues against some of the tankier characters. If I'm not having issues against the tankier characters, then I would obviously not recommend going both items. You're kind of wasting two item slots to deal with, you know, anti-tank items. Uh, when you're not having any real issues against the tanks, there's no real reason to do that. Uh, but if you're having issues against tanks, then by all means, if you need to buy both, buy both and destroy that enemy solo laner that you're having issues with, or destroy the, you know, horror support that you're having issues with, so on and so forth. Uh, but I just want you to see how versatile this character is. Uh, a kind of build that wouldn't really have any anti-crit or anti-tank uh, you know, tank item, sorry. Uh, if you want to go more into a crit style of build, uh, make sure you go Demonic Blade. Go Demonic Blade, it's very good right now. It gives you attack speed, it gives you movement speed, it gives you the stats that you want. Uh, and then you can follow it up with an item such as... Um, what is it? I'm trying to think, I'm trying to think, I'm trying to think. Mmm... Deathbringer, that's what it's called. Deathbringer and get the Venomous Deathbringer. Uh, Venomous Deathbringer does a couple of things. Uh, it offers a, a slow to the enemy team and specifically it offers anti-heal. So it's very good against if you're having trouble with, uh, you know, heavy healing comps. Uh, you can go into a crit build, go Venomous Deathbringer and have really good answer to some of the, you know, healing characters. If you need Toxic Blade, you can, but I would recommend if you really want to counter healing, just go into the crit build because healers are usually very squishy, they're mages. Go into the crit build and buy Venomous Deathbringer and Demonic, or Demon Blade, sorry. A very, very important. Uh, although Toxic Blade is not the worst on her, to be honest. Again, you get that attack speed and you get that immense amount of anti-heal. Uh, so one really cool uh, thing that you can do is you can do a bit of both. Uh, the cool thing about building crit is that you don't necessarily have to go the um, haste and katana. Uh, the reasoning behind this is because, again, you're going to be moving faster with demon blade, and they're going to be moving slower with um, demonic, or sorry, no, deathbringer, venomous deathbringer. I keep spacing out on the item names. Uh, and then also specifically, because you're hitting harder, you're relying on crits as opposed to just raw this so such high attack speed that you're just hitting a lot of attacks in a very short amount of time and doing a lot of damage. You're actually relying on bigger hitting, you know, stronger hitting autos, if you will, uh, which means you can actually kill people pretty consistently in the time that it takes, you know, the stun to be over with the critical strike chance. What this means is you don't have to go haste and katana because you'll kill them faster than they can get away from you and they're already slowed with uh, Deathbringer and you're faster with Demon Blade. Uh, so very, very interesting dynamic which kind of allows you to go into kin size anyways now that you build the two crit items uh, and you go kin size and don't go hastened or even if you want to go into an executioner or a demon or sorry, dominance um, after. Pretty, pretty good. Also, they still fire giant rip. Uh, so yeah, I hope that you guys kind of see just how versatile these builds can be. Uh, also, they have EFG, but they're still all just fucking dying, which kind of sucks for them. So we might be able to end. Uh, but I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I hope I taught you some things about Kali. I generally don't know why I don't see her played more often. I mean, she's so, so powerful. Um, and I mean, I just, I guess it's kind of the situation that I found myself in where I kind of forgot that this character existed. Um... Still very powerful, especially if you master the character and if you learn how to play her. It becomes very easy to kind of carry a game, for lack of a better word. Um, but yeah, that's Kali. Uh, in this video, we went over, obviously, the abilities, some tips and tricks on how to use these abilities. We touched a little bit on how to jungle, but not as much as I would have liked to. So if you want to see, like, a jungle, you know, guide... Uh, just straight up teaching you guys how to jungle, uh, please let me know. And you have to keep in mind, I play every role, so if you want me to play a character, um, a specific character or a specific role, uh, go down to my Twitch and we have a little tier where you can request uh, a character. And if you request a character, I do post it on YouTube as well, just in case you're not able to catch that specific stream where I play that character and go over their kind of mini guide. Uh, but yeah. I'm trying to do kind of a mini guide for a lot of the characters, but we have to keep in mind we have so many characters in Smite. Uh, unfortunately, it's going to take me a while to do the, these types of videos for all of them. 
uh, but yeah, like I mentioned, follow, join my Discord, uh, come play with the community. We have quite a lot of people with, uh, in the community at this time, so if you want to, you know, play some Smite with some people, we have quite a lot. If you want to play Smite with me, we run, uh, on the weekend, we run your games most of the time, um, during stream. Yeah, have some fun with it, join our Discord, come chat with me, interact, uh, join my Twitch, <laughs> and I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Make sure to like, comment, subscribe. Thank you so much for the support. I'll see you in the next one. Bye.